Well, we got ourselves a new one that came in last night on the hook. Turns out being a, uh, a no crank, no start situation here. Now the battery's a little on the low side, so I already went ahead and took the liberty and put the maintainer on it. So let me show you what's got here. So here be the key. what we got put on the brake nothing in fact I can hear the fuel pump kick on but that's pretty much it so I went ahead and just ran some codes <clears throat> earlier this morning before I put the uh, maintainer on it yeah it's got a few codes in there a lot of them I believe has nothing to do with anything to do with the uh, you know the no start or I should say no cranking um, reasons <clears throat> so apparently we got a uh, right front wheel speed sensor it's given some issues we've dealt with that already once before with a left left rear uh, probably about a month and a half two months ago that's not it's not the first time this car's been here uh, TCM and yeah, I'm still more complaining about the wheel speed there is uh, same with the ECM and the ISM so still codes I don't believe have anything to do with as far as why it wouldn't crank so hmm may end up uh, pull up some wire diagrams and see what uh, see what it looks like so come back to that here hold on Well, first off, I want to say thank you for joining me here today on this uh, beautiful, bright day, actually. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to screen record this, and we'll probably do it. I'll just pop it up here so you guys can see what I got, what I'm doing anyways. Um, so on this 2010 Mercedes, it's the ML350. Uh, looking at the diagrams, I already pulled up. Um, I'll pop it open here. What I'm concerned about is the starter relay. When I just to kind of cut to the chase about anything, you know, codes, I mean, they're not going to keep this thing from not wanting to start, at least not the codes that are in the system now. Um, but what I am worried about is, is the starter relay itself and possibly the starter. <laughs> I have a funny suspicion this might be a starter problem. But just to take a look at, um, I think to really kind of cut to the chase real quick, I'm just going to go right straight to fuse 122, which is a 25 amp fuse. Um, and you'll see that that goes down to the starter motor itself, as you see right here. Um, so let's do that. Let's just cut to the chase, see if, you know, when I push the starter button, if we do get power there, if we do, job is done. The unfortunate side, I, I looked at the OEM diagram at first it's <laughs> even though i can understand some of the diagrams it's it's still tough they still did not say you know which relay it is otherwise i would have probably just break out the ase wave um U active tool and pop in the relay area and do what i'm about to do right now but anyways let's just um let's go get i'm gonna go get a test light maybe two <laughs> And because we got fuse 105, it looks like so that, that 105 is getting power from um, when the key is on. So there's another relay supplying power. You can see it says Ener energized circuit 87. It's it's 86 side that you'll see that actually comes from, well, maybe from right here, the, the PCM um, or ECM, excuse me. It does have its own separate computer for the trans transmission. So, anyways, I'm going to pause it here, go grab a test light, and I'll set you up under the hood, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I grabbed myself a test light here. Let's just uh, crack this guy open. Great, there's no layout. And grab ourselves a power or a ground here, and we'll test our test our test light see it's good reason why you want to test it first there we go now we got now we got a good ground 
All right, so let's use 122, which is this guy right here. And, of course, it won't give me power because it's on the other side of the relay. So, um, what I may have to do is pull that fuse and put something else in between there. Yeah, come along with me. So, I have a perfect tool for this. I was just using it the other day, so it's already sitting out. But actually, it's this guy right here. And then we'll use this test light so that way I got bananas at both ends of it. Um, this might make it a lot easier. Let's come back, sit right there. All right, so let's do this. Uh, <laughs> I should have grabbed something to pull the fuse. Yeah. Come on, you're almost out of there. There we go. It's out. So, what we're going to do with this guy, we're going to take that fuse, plug it in here. Plug it into the box. Now the nice thing is, I mean, it does have its own light here. There was power on one side, you know, if like the fuse is blown, um, this would light up because it would see the ground from the other side of whatever device it is and power from the opposite side. But that's not how we're going to use that today. And this is, this is from uh, ASE Wave. Which is a great test kit. So I'm going to put this test light right here. Yeah. Let's see if it's in the view. It is in the view. I think I can see it from inside as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the key and see if what happens. See if that lights up. All right. Foot on the brake pedal. Hit the start button. Ooh. See the light? It's lit up. It just went out. <laughs> Is it going to be that easy? That's telling me right there that we have no uh, we have no starter or a bad starter. I mean, um, hmm. So of course, starter's kind of buried, and I have another vehicle on the lift, so that's going to be fun. This may be sitting for a bit until I can get it inside the shop. Um. But I think our diagnosis is pretty much done. We got a bad starter. <laughs> well, not as complicated of a job as I thought it was going to be. Well, uh, like I said, I think this is pretty much it for what we could do for today. Um, I got another vehicle on the lift. I'll have to get finished up just waiting on from parts to show up. But I'll uh, screen record this a little bit so I can show you. Um, I mean, obviously, there are a few things that need to look at, and one of them being, well, that's the suspension stuff there. Curious about that. Um, this part here, I'm going to have to look that code up to see what that's truly about. You know, actually, I think that that 5399, that might be a code that was popped when they popped it out of gear to get it on the tow truck, that's probably what it was. Um, the other, you know, the bright front speed wheel speed sensor that I'm just going to have to wait till we get on the lift to really kind of get a look at it. I tried slipping underneath this car, just kind of get a glance at, you know, where's the starter, get a look at it. Um, unfortunately, it just sits too low. I can't get to it. So um, I'm just going to have to wait. So that's, you know, those are the codes we have. So um, I think we're just kind of done for the day until I can get it inside the shop and then put it on the lift and physically be able to fit under there. So that's about it for right now. So stay tuned. I'll uh, bring you back when I'm going to go right there and actually test at the starter itself before we just make the call saying it's a starter. Um, I want to make sure and certain that that's, you know, 
that's the problem. Well, hey viewers, back next day. Finally got the car on the lift. And I got underneath there, and I am right now, I got my test light out. The red line actually runs down, and it's connected to the uh, starter excite wire. And we're going to go in and kick on the ignition, and then see if that test light will light up. Um, actually, I need a position to where I can see it a little bit better. Let's put it right. Yeah, let's put it right there. That should do the trick. All right, speaking of trick, I'm gonna get up in here without falling over. All right, let me see if I can get you in a position where you can see the light as well. There you can see it. So, here we go. Oop, I gotta put the foot on the brake first. Oop, there you go. All right, let's do it again. <laughs> there we go. So, starter gets power down there. So there you go, viewers. Um, quick and simple little diag. Showed the fact that it is the actual starter itself, at least the solenoid end of it. I did test the uh, the engine fars to make sure it actually had a good ground, and it does. So um, there's no worries about that as well. So I guess from here, we're just going to order another starter for it. Um, I may or may not film the process of that. This was mainly just to show a quick, simple diag on, you know, figuring out what's uh, what the cause was of a no start, so or a no crank even. So there we go. And um, would you guys uh, hit the like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Mm. One. Two. Three. So there you have it, people. Purely a starter. That's all it was. 181,000 miles. Yeah, I think it's done its job. Anyways, I hope people actually... Uh, learn something out of this process when you're you know unable to get underneath the vehicle to test straight at the starter itself uh, you know looking at a wire diagram we can see what we can actually interrupt at the fuse block itself which made it pretty handy um, seeing that we have power there you know we didn't have to struggle and go any further with it the next process was to actually get underneath the car and test right at the starter um, where i did test at was at the solenoid po point here so that's where it was getting signaled, but we had no activation. So anyways, so speaking of activate, once you activate that like button, um, subscribe to the channel. Definitely appreciate you guys following along on this one and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, and I didn't forget about the uh, wheel speed sensor concern. That was one of the codes that was within the system. So what I've done here is I, you know, I'm just gonna pop in the, uh, I just grabbed the Autel today. So I'm gonna pull up the wheel speed sensors and we're gonna take it for a little te quick test drive and then see you know, if they're all working. Obviously the one we're gonna be looking and watching for is this guy here. So um, yeah, so let's go do that. Uh, I'll bring you on once we're on the road. Ah, oh, guys, we're on the road. We're rolling. You can see that the, uh, uh, look at the numbers there. Right front, obviously, is working. It seems to be matched with the others. Um. So. not sure if this would be an issue as far as heat or roll this window up here. Now the owner of the vehicle does live on a gravel road on a long stretch of it so I don't know if it's a vibration thing if something's going sour there. Um, 
you may have to take it back and put it back on the lift and just kind of give it a visual and maybe a little shakedown not to be too intrusive with the wire harness or anything but that may be what we need to do um, well I'm just gonna drive it here a little bit get around a few blocks and then uh, see if anything happens and if so then I'll bring it on well that's it folks brought it back here to the shop uh, there's no dropouts no issues with the wheel speed sensor could have been just a fluke I'm not sure so I'm gonna, at this point just gonna return this back to the customer let her drive it around for a while if the code happens to come back then you know we'll deal with the issue then at that point so anyways so you deal with something hit the old like button make a comment like to hear from you all see what you think so appreciate you following along and we'll catch you next time thanks for watching bye bye